Hello, this is Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada, and another installment um, uh, of the restoration of this uh, 1961 88-inch uh, Land Rover. And I thought I'd just give you a short video on a progress report, such as it is. <laughs> okay, so um, 1961 Series 2 Land Rover, uh, but we'll do it with a later uh, Series 2A drivetrain. Um, the, uh, not all Land Rover Series 2 and a quarter engines are the same. In and around 1961, they changed it, and the parts for the earlier one are pretty hard to get. So if you're, if you're restoring uh, one of these cars, unless you're, you know, dead set on, um, on, on absolute originality, which not many people are on these, on these vehicles, uh, you'll probably want to switch it to uh, a later two and a quarter engine in. And, uh, you know, you might as well switch it from positive earth, which the first ones were, to about 1965, uh, to negative earth. Again, just because it's just easier on ordering parts and having people work on it. Um, just my opinion, of course. Okay, so you can see it's all nice and shiny. Um, it's galvanized, and it's come back from the, the uh, galvanizing... Uh, depot and now I'm just uh, assembling it loosely uh, just to make sure I remember where everything goes now uh, there is some debate as to whether you want to galvanize the bulkhead or not the galvanizing is very high temperature of course it's it's zinc uh, bonded to the steel so it's incredibly durable and it's a it's an industrial process this fence right behind us and all chain link fences like it are also galvanized in, in the same process. Uh, okay, so you really have the ultimate in um, durability when you galvanize it. And of course, instead of like spraying, painting it, and putting wax oil everywhere, which is like a wax you can inject into the frame, the, uh, the zinc gets everywhere. Now, it's not without its problems. Um, one of them is that uh, it, it, it's very high temperature. Uh, you know, 700 degrees Fahrenheit or something like that. Um, and so if you have um, thin sheet metal, it can warp it. Um, there have been guys who said that, you know, it warped the bulkhead and it didn't fit properly after that. And, uh, you know, some of these thinner um, sheet metal sections can warp. Now, I got pretty lucky with this one and didn't have any issues uh, refitting it to the chassis. And uh, there's no, there's no uh, material warpage uh, that I have to worry about. But that, that can, I, I've, heard, I've heard different stories. I think particularly if you've had it repaired and then different sections welded in and so on, the heat can affect different sections differently. So that's something to be aware of with um, galvanizing. Um, I, 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 I went with it just because I wanted the like I said, the ultimate durability. The other problem with it is that you know, there's a lot of threaded um, nut certs and captive nuts and so on. And the liquid zinc um, fills in uh, all, of these, uh, all of these pockets. And you can see, can you see that? Uh, where it's kind of dripping out. Now that'll need to be retapped. Um, and worst case is that I, you know, that I have trouble uh, maneuvering these uh, these captive nuts in there um, again, um, and we can see that uh, there's a buildup of zinc on um, on some of these holes. It, it was a little bit challenging on these ones here, um, uh, but it, it, the zinc is soft, and if you just use a drill, it it it, it comes out not bad. Um, some of the stuff, like also for galvanizing. A mechanism like this you couldn't galvanize because you'd never get it working again because it'd all be stuck together and so this is CAD plated okay it's a much thinner coating um, there's not too many options for CAD uh, and you know I didn't really want these pieces shiny but figured I could paint them uh, paint over them if I didn't like it anyway so I did have some stuff um, CAD plated as well um, you know, I'm just in the process of sorting all this hardware. And so that's uh, that's two vehicles worth that's been disassembled. And here's, of course, all the parts that need to go in it. Two vehicles worth of parts that uh, need to go back in it. The body works in the back there. Um, and, uh, okay. 
So uh, what I plan to do is not the most efficient way, um, uh, but uh, what I'd like to do is just assemble the vehicle totally um, and then see what fits and what doesn't and what parts I need and then strip it back down and, um, and, then, and then paint it. Okay, so I'm in that process now. Um, I do have a donor uh, two and a, uh, 2A, this is a 69, and it's going to donate its uh, uh, most of its engine and gearbox. I have an 8 to 1 compression in engine. Land Rover offered both in period in the 60s, a 7 to 1 compression for those markets with crappy fuel, and then an 8 to 1 for those in better fuel. So this, of course, looks terrible. Um, uh, but I've got the block machined, another block machined, an 8 to 1 block machine. I've got the head uh, all uh, machined and ready to go. And uh, what's left is I need to take this gearbox out of here. And uh, I had a little bit of work on it. You can see this thick film of uh, oily sludge that's covered the entire thing that looks awful probably is doing a not bad job of protecting the alloy underneath. So I'll uh, uh, dig this out and scrape it off and get a wire brush and get rid of this. Oh my God, this is an ugly one. This is typical rust in the land in these later series 2As. You can see the, wrist, the rear cross member just dissolves and uh, you know, there's rust in the outriggers and so on. So this, this chassis is junk. It's, uh, not repairable um, nor well I suppose you probably could do the bulkhead but there's better examples out there so I'll finish stripping this uh, vehicle take the bulkhead off get rid of all the stuff on the engine uh, and uh, and then uh, pull the engine and gearbox and use that as the, the we'll put the gearbox in the other rover and we'll use the internals of this engine not the pistons or the camshaft or anything like that, but the distributor drive and and uh, and various um, uh, timing gears and so on. So we'll we'll, can't, we'll we'll harvest this one for parts. We'll use that gearbox and uh, rebuild all that. And I've in the trailer. I've got mostly NOS panels that'll go back on it, and uh, that'll be that. Okay. So when you also, I restored the front grill panel, again, without issue. And there's there's people that say don't do that, but, uh, and the front bumper's galvanized as well. So this is basically all the steel bits, I'll save for some brackets and so on, um, and, the, and, the, and the galvanized cappings, which I've also, sorry, it's a mess here, but you can see the, the galvanized cappings that I have. Uh, windscreen frame and so on, grill, um, windscreen frames over there. Uh, that's the hood support there on the back. Um, you can see that, uh, you know, those are all the steel parts which are subject to rust. So um, it's good for another 50 years. Okay, thank you very much. Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada.